The other day, um, I was at Publix checking out. I forgot what I was buying, but that's not important. But I had on my In-N-Out shirt. Of course, In-N-Out is the burger place on the West Coast. A lot of people love it. But a guy, he saw me with my shirt, and he yelled, overrated. And I was like, what is he talking about? But I looked down because I forgot I had the shirt on. And I was like, oh, he was talking to me. So we laughed about it. We talked about it real quick. He said he used to live out on the West Coast. And he said In-N-Out burgers are good now. But he said because he had them so much, he just felt like they were a bit overrated. Then that got me to thinking, like, man. How do football players feel when they get called overrated? That's got to hurt. But on a positive note, on the flip side, how does a football player feel when he is called underrated? That's a much better characteristic of somebody when they're under versus overrated. And that's exactly what we're getting ready to talk about right now because PFF, they compiled a list of the most underrated players on each and every team. And they stopped by the AFC North, of course, to give us this. And for the Bengals, it was Jordan Battle. For the Browns, it was Maurice Hurst. For the Steelers, it was Isaac Samalo. But those guys are not important right now because we're talking about the Baltimore Ravens. For the Baltimore Ravens, the player that was the most underrated on the team that they said, it was Brandon Stevens. And I was like, oh, you know what? I like that. I, I, I like that a lot because with Brandon Stevens, I remember going into this year, I think all of us, majority of us going into this year, we just didn't know how Brandon Stevens was going to be. Uh, we knew what Brandon Stevens, he had some moments, but then he had some moments. And it was like, Ooh, what, what are we going to get out of him this year? I, I think expectations were low for Brandon Stevens going into this season, this past season, because with him, uh, first, as you all know, he started out of safety, then he went to cornerback, then Harbaugh was like, he's going to play safety, but then he ended up playing cornerback. It was just all this back and forth. And, and it's like when it's all that back and forth, yeah, it does make you versatile, but it makes you more of a jack of all trades instead of specializing in one. So going into this year, uh, the Baltimore Ravens, they signed Arthur Millette. They signed Ronald Darby. They signed Rock Yassine. So, and they obviously had Marlon Humphrey. So a lot of us felt like, all right, they signed, they got Marlon Humphrey. Uh, they signed Rock Yassine. Oh, it's, cool. it's, it's going to be Marlon and, and Rock Yassine as a starting cornerback. Okay, cool. All right, that's that's fine. Uh, and whoever's in the slot, whether well, it's going to be Arthur Millet, it's going to be somebody. All right, cool. So they worked that out, and Rock Yassine just, it didn't work out with him. It didn't. And then we saw with Ronald Darby, he got thrown into the starting lineup a lot. And he, he did his thing, but with Marlon Humphrey. Very beginning of the season, before the season even started, they were like, oh, Marlon Humphrey got a foot injury. He's going to be out next three, four weeks. And we were like, oh, no, <laughs> this, oh, this ain't good. Play the Texans the first week. So it's like, ah, oh, we can get by. Cool without Marlon Humphrey. But then we play the Bengals. You got Jamar Chase. You got T. Higgins. You got Tyler Boyd. What are we getting ready to do? Insert Brandon Stevens. This man was locked down this year. He was such an amazing cornerback for the Baltimore Ravens this year. He did his thing, and he did his thing consistently. When you look at players with higher expectations, like somebody like a Marlon Humphrey, uh, who's getting paid a lot of money. Not saying Marlon Humphrey's bad because he's not bad. He had a rough year, and his past couple of years been a little up and down in some places. But Marlon Humphrey, not bad. But when you look at somebody like that, the expectations were a lot higher because we know what Marlon Humphrey has done. We know what he's accomplished. We know what he brings to the Baltimore Ravens. But we, for Brandon Stevens, it was a lot of unknowns. So when we look at Brandon Stevens, when we think about Brandon Stevens, it was like, what's it going to be? But he like exceeded expectations by far. So with him being on this list, like a lot of lists, sometimes I agree with him, sometimes I disagree with him. And you know how it goes. But with this list, I agree wholeheartedly. Most underrated player for the Baltimore Ravens being Brandon Stevens. Oh, yeah. For sure. And if you agree or disagree with this list, you can still subscribe to the channel. Subscribe to the channel, turn your notifications on, and leave a like on the video because it helps out the channel a ton. A whole ton. And somebody who helped out the Baltimore Ravens a ton was Brandon Stevens. Now, when you think about him, too, this is a big year for him because this is the final year of his contract. A lot can change in the Baltimore Ravens secondary next year. Baltimore Ravens got some options with Brandon Stevens with the, well, on what they can do. Um, they could keep him. To keep him, you would obviously have to sign him to a long-term contract extension, uh, and that's going to cost you a pretty penny. Uh, or you could let him walk. Let him walk in free agency. Let him go to another team and watch him flap his raven wings somewhere else. Now, uh, speaking of the secondary, uh, like I said, a lot could change because then they, that brings up Marlon Humphrey. What are they going to do about his contract? Because he's getting up there in age a little bit, a little bit. 
But the injuries, they starting to pile up a little bit. Hopefully this year will be much different than the past couple years, and there will be no injuries for Marlon Humphrey at all. But they could possibly start to think about moving on. And, I mean, you know they start to think about it because they drafted a corner in the first round. Like, yeah, we know it's best play available, this and that, but if they draft in a play in the first round, that lets you know, like, hey, they getting ready to move on from somebody, and they need somebody to step in and fill in for that person very, very soon. I mean, we've seen it, like, 2018, um, they drafted uh, they drafted uh, Lamar Jackson, and he, of course, ended up being a fill-in for Joe Flacco. Um, you see Kyle Hamilton, they drafted him. He ended up taking over for Chuck Clark. Uh, you see Tyler Linderbaum. He ended up taking over for Pat McCarry and Matt Scorer because the Ravens said center position over the past previous years from Tyler Linderbaum. It, it was rough, man, as yeah, we all know. But we see it. it. It happens time and time again. So when somebody, especially in the first round, but when somebody drafted that early, yeah, they looking to replace somebody sooner uh, rather than later. So with Marlon Humphrey, it's – we, we're going to see what happens with that. But this ain't about Marlon Humphrey. This is about Brandon Stevens. Um, him being underrated is it, it's true. It, it, it's definitely true because he is somebody that, again, the expectations were low, but he exceeded them by far, and he maintained a level of consistency not just in a couple of games, not just in a string, but really throughout the entire season. He ended up being somebody that the Baltimore Ravens could rely on consistently throughout and when you have a player like that, obviously you want to do what you got to do to keep him. But will they? We'll see soon.